Welcome back. Jagex has been going crazy with the updates recently as we now have the Wilderness Bosses rework. Revamping the three main Wildy bosses, Callisto, Vedion, and Venonatus, massively. Including the drops. The Wilderness Bosses now drop a bunch of new items to upgrade the three Wilderness weapons. And also they will drop their respective pieces to make the new weapon called the Void Waker. This weapon is the Karasi Sword of the original RuneScape, but much stronger. The Wildy weapon upgrades would be great for General Slayer and bossing in the Wildy, for collection log and pet hunting, things like that. But the main prize is definitely the Void Waker. This weapon is incredibly powerful because of its special attack that is not only amazing for PvP, but also for bossing. But I will save the details for when I do eventually obtain it in the future videos. There is lots to talk about, but you'll be hearing a lot from, of course, a PVMer's perspective. How will I manage to survive the onslaught of PKers to get these new drops? Find out now in the latest installment of the Iron Bar series. Prior to the Wildy update, I had a Chaos Fanatic task, so I thought it'd be a good time to practice some Wildy PVM to get warmed up. Honestly, I haven't done anything long term in the Wildy in years. The last time was for the Revenant weapons. But the wilderness has changed so much since then for example revs are now singles only so there's a lot of things to get used to outside of the new content there's been a massive change in the scrolling mechanic jagex added the anti skull feature which if it is turned on with the green check you cannot be sculled under any circumstances i didn't quite understand how it worked initially but throughout the video i started realizing how amazing this feature is for pvmers but essentially, you cannot get skull tricked or accidentally skull anymore outside of, of course, the high risk roll. Don't go there. And the best thing about it is that if someone did attack you, you can fight back without worrying about being sculled. This feature makes the wilderness much less toxic from a PVMer point of view, and it certainly makes the wilderness experience much more fair. I did encounter PK during this task, and it was actually kind of nice to be able to hit him back without ever worrying about sculling. So that was a good warm up. Anyways, the Wilderness Boss revamp is finally out, and it is time to go grind for these new best and slot items. First few days of the update, after consulting with viewers on Twitch chat, I decided I would set up a team to run the multi version of Callisto, since I expect there will be a huge influx of PKers, especially teams. So a good size to fight back would make sense, and it would be a fun time. We didn't use anti skull settings for day one as our goal was to get as many of the viewers to fight back as possible against PKers, and I'd say it was fairly effective at holding down the world against small teams of PKers. But occasionally, large teams of 30 or more people would show up, and that's when you gotta just dip, as there's no chance of fighting back, and I prefer to keep my loot. It was actually fun, a bunch of people got drops, and we anti PK'd a good amount of loot as well, including some of my own. Oh, more red behind? Okay, so the drops are straight up under you. So I told the boys that we're gonna only bring three items to risk just because you don't really want to bring a fourth one. There's gonna be big teams that can probably smite you out and uh, Mr. VIP Chad brought full crystal including the helmet. Uh, yeah, man, he, he better bank that because I cannot be liable for him losing this. Yo, uh, uh, PKers, PKers, alien, kill him. It oh shit, it's a huge team. Shit. Alright, okay guys, there's a huge clean team, so get the fuck out. <laughs> Just get out, dude. There's a huge clan. And he freaking lost it. Oh my god. Oh shit, yeah. Damn, D-pick drop here. Oh, sick. I didn't even see that. Someone just got Claw? Dude, there's just so- Oh, Claws of Callisto. Dude, D.Va. Holy shit. Damn, grats. <laughs> cool. Well, we're already seeing drops. That's crazy. Mr. Sir Strength. He's a PK. Get him. <laughs> Yo, he's just... Oh, he's insta-dead. Oh, my God. Oh, there's a clan. Get him, get him, get him. There's a clan, there's a clan. There's a clan. Get Tux, get Tux, get Tux, get Tux. T-U-X, T-U-X, get T-U-X. Get T-U-X, get T-U-X, get T-U-X, get T-U-X. And then get a uh, TL. There you go. Small teams, we can kill him. Yeah. I'll watch this, bro. Oh, dang. I tried. I tried. Oh, <gasps> Dragon Crossbow? Oh, my God. No. <laughs> no. Dragon. 
no, I can't pick it up. By the way, it's it's someone someone gets it. Okay, it's yours. <laughs> oh no! All right, good luck getting the dragon crossbow, guys, because I literally can't pick it up. No. <laughs> Shit, you guys are making money off of me. Shit. Oh, someone just got the pet. No way, bro. This guy got the pet. We've seen quite a lot of things now. The only things we haven't seen from here is the Tyrannical Ring and the Void Waker Hilt piece from this boss. So, better to leave. <laughs> There's just a lot of them. Oh, shit. He died for a second. So I'm going to spend a mil at Frox Enclave so that I can get myself the ability to get the loot keys when I kill somebody. It's just kind of nice so that way I can just like collect it or something. I don't know how many I'll get during this grind if any at all. But uh, yeah, there will definitely be some anti beacon here and there. And then uh, yeah, for the loot keys, it'd be cool to show off later on. What? Yo, dude, we okay. Someone just got the pet. Luckily, it's auto-insured, so even if he dies, like, he, he uh, keeps it. <laughs> We're gonna try to solo some Bananatus. I've seen my boys do it, and it doesn't look too bad, so we're gonna go and give it a go. So what's the difference between the multi and single versions? The multi version of the bosses are stronger and give significantly more rewards and better rates as well for the rare items. But the single versions also drops all the uniques at a rare rate. And it is singles and be low level 30 wildy, which means escaping peakers is way easier than their multi counterparts. Jagex also buffed the overall loot from the multi version though, so it's more balanced for being more risky. What is there a wa oh, fucking PK already? Okay. Yes, I made it. Dude, I almost got the kill too. I almost got the first kill. Damn, all these tile markers are useless now. I gotta get rid of these. Oh, yeah, I got the kill. Let's go. Antidote. Oh, my God. 100 Snapdragons. That's an insta-telly, boys. Wait, wait. Blighted Super Restore? Hold on. Hold on. That's 776k, but I have no run. Yeah, I definitely need to bring more stamina. I'll bring two. I didn't know this boss train run. Like, what the hell? Red chins? So good. All right, I'll definitely catch some chins for this. Maybe I'll get the pet along the way. Huh? Oh my god, 500 red spider eggs. Holy shit. I don't want to lose that. <laughs> well, I was I wanted to sell it, but at least the good thing is if other people show up, I can still get a drop. So that's one of the best parts about this update. Just the fact that you don't really waste time no matter what happens. So, at least in the multi version. Feels good, man. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. I got a Void Waker gem! Holy shit! I'm out! <laughs> Holy shit! I got the I got one of the uh shards for the Karasi. Oh my god! <laughs> Get out! Holy! Holy! Yeah, I saw one of my friends uh, on stream sell it for like a hundred something else. So it's actually crazy. So these Void Waker pieces are actually really stable in price, only going down gradually, and it makes sense because the Wilderness is one of the places where PVMers, typical PVMers, will absolutely dread doing, unlike something like TOA release, where pretty much it was very new friendly and anybody can give it a go and have a chance. So if you want to take a risk, though, you can definitely get some pretty good, reliable, money-making uh, drops from these guys. However, the PKs will definitely be around in probably bigger amounts than ever before because these items are very good profits, so there will always be consistent old PVMers trying to go and grab these items, like me. Well, I'm having fun though. This, this is kind of fun too. I don't even mind doing this with random ass people, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> unspoken. This is like unspoken uh, agreement that we're just gonna do some group bossing together. So the wildy bosses are in their own layers now, so you can no longer glitch them and safe spot them. But their mechanics have changed so that it is very realistic to kill them without taking stupid amounts of damage. The single bosses are scattered across level 20 wilderness. And the multi ones are above level 30 near each other, where there's only one entrance for each boss. And leaving from any of these bosses in multi leads to one dungeon that has several exits. 
let's talk about the mechanics as well. Jagex essentially rebounds all the attacks of the original bosses to be either dodgeable or prayerable. Fenanatus moves around a lot this time. It does like to range or mage if you're far away, so it's recommended to fight it close up with a good crush weapon and pray melee. Pagoras being the best in slot here. It also shoots a sticky web that drains run and damages you, so best to lure the web in a corner when he's about to spray it. Also, it summons spiders that you should kill with chains of barrage as you take more damage if too many are out at once. Also, Din spec works great. Anyways, for Callisto, it is pretty straightforward boss. You want to range it and cross is your best in slot, but RCB and F bow works fine. Freezing the boss is crucial to prevent his 100% hit rate melee attacks if next to you. Recommended to range from far away and pray range as it has a weak range attack and a magic attack that hits up to 50 but can be blocked by reacting and praying magic. What? What hit me from Narnia? You saw that? Ew. Oh, that's the strat, guys. Holy shit. Freeze after her house. It's OP. Freeze properly, and you only need to freeze once at the beginning, once at 66%, and one last time at around 33%. Make sure to freeze after the red howled animation disappears. Vedion is probably the easiest as all the attacks are dodgeable. It has a dodgeable melee swipe, it shoots lightning, and has an AoE melee stun attack. Simply dodge all the shadow spawns that are near you to avoid the lightning and the AoE melee stun. It summons the dogs as usual, and you have to kill them before you can damage him further. And, of course, it has two phases like before. It's weak to crush like Venonatus. Masses were fine for the first few days, but getting drops for yourself is very hard as you unfortunately compete with all your friends for the rare drop. So ultimately, a small group is more ideal for the multi-version of the bosses. Since I'm not a news reporter and I can actually give you guys some info that comes later down the line with updates, Jagex already released the official rates for all the drops from the multi and singles version. Have a look. As you can see, the multi-version is significantly better chance of the new drops, assuming it's a small team. The Void Waker pieces being 1 in 375 in multi versus the 1 in 1000 in the single this means both options are going to be incredibly similar in terms of average time to get the drops, which is nice. So in this situation here, there's one PK and he accidentally barraged a bunch of us and he just tagged a bunch of other people, except for me, I think. So I couldn't actually attack him, but the other players that he attacked, because they have anti-skull feature on, they can actually fight back and never get skulled. So again, you can't get skulled and you can still fight back. It's great. Oh, yo. Get his ass. Just get his ass. <laughs> Alright. Oh, dude. You killed him? <laughs> Alright, there you go. Good work. I, I didn't even see that. Oh, shit. Books got the skull of Vedion. No wonder we left. That's crazy. Nice. Well, we did see something. The singles are more chill, I suppose, because of the instant telly perk. But multi is pretty nice with a small team, as you'll see, drops much more often. And you will probably find worlds much easier. Ultimately, I'd use both versions because sometimes PKers hit one spot more frequently than others. So I'm more than happy to be flexible based on the current situation. Also, a good strategy I've found for escaping in the multi bosses is usually taking the northeast exit of the escape cave. Because if I move a few tiles east, it will be singles all the way to level 30. So my chances of escaping greatly increases if a team is chasing me. Yeah, real tank right now. Real tank shit right now, bro. See ya, screw up. You can hit me. Oh, they, they left. <laughs> they realize I'm in singles, so they just straight left. Overall though, this update has been some of the best updates in terms of PvP, especially from a PvMer because they really thought this through from all facets of the player base. The ability to choose to grind between multi and singles was a stroke of genius. Also, the skull prevention makes grinding bosses in a wild east so much better, as I do have the ability to fight back in a one-on-one -on -one situation in singles, making it so much more interesting than just always running away. <gasps> Oh my god, Claws of Callisto. Holy shit. Peace out, boys. Holy shit, yo. Okay, okay, we, we spoke. Holy shit, yo. That's actually a really good item. Holy shit. <laughs> Two out of six. Two out of six. Oh my god.
Holy, get out. <laughs> Holy. Nice, bro. Two out of six. Holy, you gotta be quick, you know? There's no time to be looking at that on the ground. Uh-uh. Okay. I, okay, 60 mil. Uh, yo, you guys want a split of it. I'll give you I'll give you a 10 mil split. You know, each. So the Callisto Claw is one of the best new draws for me because I can upgrade the Vigorous Chain Mace so that it is overall stronger and gives me a special attack that's decent. The special attack is more accurate, stops your opponent from being able to run for 3.6 seconds, and does 20 damage over time if it lands. But the Chain Maze is best in stuff from Fenonatus and Vedion, so it's going to be super useful for grinding out the other Wilderness draws with the new Ursin Chain Maze. Oh, okay, nice. It died before. Oh, what? Again? No way! Oh my god, no way. That's actually so troll. Oh my god. Oh no, I feel bad now because I have two in one day. Ah? Uh... Holy shit, I just hit like a 69. Wow. Aside from the Ursin Chainmates being best in slot at two of the three core worldly bosses, Vedion and Callisto, it's also really good against PKers, especially when you need to make an escape and the reason is simple this mace stops your opponent from running for 3.6 seconds per spec so you can do it twice if you want and it's very accurate spec as well i've definitely surprised a few pkers what the spec because they were unsure what was going on when they could not run some of them even panicked away at certain points but it has definitely helped me escape a few times or just throw off my attacker and just made the overall experience a bit more fun instead of just you know running away you can resist a bit and deter them from maybe coming back the uh... <laughs> nice i saved the homie save the homie man that's how you do it boys <gasps> oh you are so lucky i'm walking here <laughs> I love that, it's so funny. It is actually hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, this guy! Yo! <laughs> this chain maze is pretty good. Oh my god, I almost killed him! Oh my god! No way! <laughs> Fucking hell, dude! Oh, I almost killed him, bro. God damn. Jesus Christ, mate. Ah, oh, god damn it, they got me now, but... Fucking hell, almost killed him, though. <laughs> Yo. So, the wilderness grind definitely requires a bit more logistical planning because I simply cannot spend all day grinding in the wilderness because the amount of PKers that shows up is definitely quite stressful. And also... During peak times, it's really hard to get kills without getting interrupted like every 5 minutes and things like the weekend. So when I basically am tired or I just know it's not a good time to go grind in the wilderness, I just go work on my other stuff. You know, the pet hunting, the collection log stuff. So here's some of the progress from that. Oh, road top of darkness. We're done. We're done. Hey, I'm pretty sure this is a full, full completion now. Nice. All in the log now. Very good. And finally, the elites. Ah, nothing for an elite. Surprisingly, masters gave me a slot. I I think that's like the hardest one to get a slot now. Yo. Oh, it changes your eye color too. I never even noticed that. Well, it's nice to know that I can bring a regular Slayer home and uh, it'll work. So, I don't have to like pay for the imbues if I die with it. Because there's nothing, there's no imbue, you know, on this Slayer home. One of the good things about melee KBD. Only risk it if I don't have protect item on, but... Yeah, it's okay, I have a plenty of black mass. Anyways. What? Dragon Bow Necklace? Come on. Damn. We need the other rare items, man. Not uh, the Dragon Bow Necklace, please.